In this video, I'm going to look at the reaction between a hydrogen halide and an unsymmetrical alkene. So the alkene in question is methyl cyclopentene. And we react it with hydrogen bromide. So the first thing we need to say is that the bromine is more electronegative than the hydrogen, and so therefore it's going to be slightly negative and the hydrogen is slightly positive. So we've got a dipole across the HBr bond. So what's going to happen, an electron pair from the double bond, and it's the pi electron pair that jumps out. I'll just show you this molly mod here. So this is the pi bond here. It's on the outside of the alkene, so it's more exposed. So it's the pi electron pair that's going to be attracted to that slightly positive hydrogen. And then the knock-on effect of that is the pair of electrons in this HBr bond are going to be repelled completely under that bromine and that's going to break that bond. Now the way that bond breaks is really important. You see it's called heterolytic fission. So what is heterolytic fission? It's where covalent bond is broken. So HBr is a covalent bond and it's broken in such a way that both of the electrons from the broken bond have gone to the same atom. So they've both gone to the bromine. So the hydrogen can either add to this carbon here or this carbon here. And because this is unsymmetrical, it's actually going to lead to two different products. So the first thing we'll look at is the hydrogen adding to here. So this is what will be produced from that. So I'll just quickly explain what's going on here. So the hydrogen's gone on the left-hand carbon of the double bond. That means that this carbon here on the right has effectively lost an electron because it's over here now. Um, so positively charged carbon there. And the bromine has become a bromide ion because it's gained both of the electrons from the bond. It, or, it already owned one of them, but it now owns the one that belonged to the hydrogen. So it's gained an electron, so it's negatively charged. So we've got this positive ion and this negative ion. And basically what happens next is we take a pair of electrons from the lone pair and bond to that carbon. So we show that with this curly arrow here. So that means the product of that reaction would look like that. So then if we look at it the other way around, so instead of putting the hydrogen on this carbon, we'll put it on this carbon, which means the positive charge is on that carbon. And then if we draw a bromide ion over here, we just do the same thing there. That means the product of that reaction looks like that. So there's the whole thing there on one slide. Hopefully it all makes sense. Um, but what we need to focus on now is these things here. So these positively charged ions that have got carbon in them, they're called carbocations. Carbo, carbon, cation, positively charged. So starting with this carbocation on the left, what we need to do is classify it as either being primary, secondary or tertiary. And the way we do that is we look at the carbon with the positive charge and we look at how many carbon groups are directly bonded to that. So you can see one, two, three. So this is what we call a tertiary carbocation. And then if we move over to this carbocation, so focusing on the carbon with the positive charge, one, two. So this has only got two carbon groups directly bonded to the positive carbon. So this is what we call a secondary carbocation. Now, there is such a thing as a primary carbocation as well, and that's just going to have one carbon group directly bonded to the C+. But primary is not an option here. And the thing we need to know is that the tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary one. If you had a primary one, the secondary would be more stable than the primary. I'll explain that in a second. But in this case, tertiary is more stable than secondary. So we're going to get more of this product forming and less of this product forming. So we tend to call the products the major product. So this is the major product because it's formed from a more stable tertiary, in this case, carbocation. This is what we would call the minor product because it's formed from a less stable secondary carbocation. So I'll just use this slide to help me explain the difference in stability of the carbocations. I'm just using generic formula here. So the R group stands for the carbon group. 
So primary, you only have one carbon group attached to the C plus directly. Secondary two, tertiary three. And these red sort of arrows are showing that the R groups, the carbon groups, are actually releasing electrons into that carbon plus. And what that does is it helps spread that positive charge around, stabilizing the ion. So you can see tertiary is going to be the most stable because it's got the most R groups to help stabilize that um, positive charge. So carbocation stability is increasing from primary to secondary to tertiary. The major product will always form from a more stable carbocation intermediate. Okay, so in the mechanism that we've used for this video, we had these options here. So tertiary forms the major product, um, secondary would form the minor product. If you had these two, it would be secondary would be major, the primary would be the minor product.